Hi guys and welcome to another video. So in today's video, as you can tell by the title and probably by what I'm wearing, the theme is bridal makeup. So even though I will be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide of how to achieve a bridal look, it's not necessarily specific just to brides. It could be if you're going to be a bridesmaid, wedding guest, mother of the bride, doesn't matter. It's suitable for everybody. So this is the final look that I've created. And now you can watch back and see how I've created this look. So let's get started with the makeup. So first of all, I just wanted to give you a few tips. Regardless of which makeup look you're going for, the makeup should always, always make you feel your best. So if there's something in your makeup routine currently that makes you confident, that makes you feel sexy, make sure you also do it for your wedding day. Because if you don't do that signature one thing that you do in your makeup routine, you will feel weird on your wedding day and you won't feel like yourself or perhaps be as happy with the makeup as you would like to be for your wedding day. So for example, for me, that one thing is a really slick eyeliner. I really, really, really like a killer eyeliner. So if I don't have an eyeliner on, then I just don't feel as powerful, as confident. So that's the one thing for me that is a non-negotiable. Secondly, keep it classy. So regardless of what look you have going on in your day-to-day -day lives, whether it's a more gothy look, whether it's more of a sexy look, where it's more of a Kardashian look, regardless of what your everyday look is, just make sure that on your wedding day, the one day that you keep it classy. Trust me, whatever you think may be cool, trendy, fun right now, 20 years later, the 20 year older you may disagree. The 20 year older you may look back on photographs and think, God, what were you thinking? So keep it classy and your photos are going to be around forever. And I promise you that the classy look is what will translate the best for years to come. Think of the climate of where you're marrying and whether you might even need to factor in things like SPF into your routine. If you're somebody that gets easily burnt, think about that when you're getting married and especially if you're getting married in a hot country. Alternatively, are you getting married in the snow, somewhere freezing cold? Factor that in when you're doing your skincare and foundation. Thin layers of makeup really helps to keep the makeup on for much, much longer and I will show you as I take you step by step. The general rule is for your blush and your lip to match. So what you don't want is like necessarily a corally, peachy toned blush and then a pinky lip. It won't look crazy, but at the same time, I think it's always best to keep similar tones. There are a couple of essentials you should keep on with on you or at least with your maid of honor. These essentials are things like cotton buds in case you cry and you get a little bit of makeup smudged underneath. Things like powder, you will get oily, you will get a little bit of shine, no matter how much you try to prepare your skin. So keeping a setting powder on hand is super handy. Lipstick, you must keep your lipstick on you, it will come off. You'll be drinking lots, eating lots, kissing a lot of people. So trust me when I say that your lipstick will need topping up at some point. Other things to consider if your contact lens is wearer like I am, I would definitely keep a contact lenses solution bottle, just a small one on hand, because it will be a very, very long day. More often than not, brides start extremely early in the morning for hair and makeup, and then by the time that it gets to the end of the day, it's already like midnight, for example. So that's an extremely long day to be wearing contact lenses. So I would definitely suggest keeping a solution on hand just to refresh your eyes during the day. And last but not least, if you're wearing false lashes, I would definitely suggest that you keep the lash glue in your handbag. The worst thing that would happen is halfway through, half your lashes hanging off like a ugly tarantula. So just keep the lash glue on hand for any lash emergencies. And last but not least, for the love of God, do not touch your face. Where I used to work in makeup, so many women have this natural habit of wanting to touch their face throughout the day like this like this rubbing their eye touching their mouth that's the worst thing you can do so try to keep these away from this so now let's get started on the makeup so generally i would recommend applying a sheet mask on the bride or on your own face at least half an hour before the makeup application just because it'll give enough time for all the good ingredients in that mask to sink into your skin and then afterwards your skin will be all plumped and hydrated. Today I'm going in with a different method with traditional skincare and I will take you through step by step. So firstly, I'm using the Oskia Super 16 Collagen Serum. So you only need a tiny bit. 
and this is just to prep your skin. Just bear in mind that just because you're doing a makeup look should never mean that you forego a proper skincare routine. What you put on as your base underneath your makeup will determine the smoothness, the flawlessness of that makeup and how long it lasts ultimately. Next I'm going in with the Beauty Pie Pure Ceramides Under Eye Serum. Love this one. Don't forget your under eye area always. And also applying under eye cream or serum will just help your concealer to go on much more smoothly and again last longer. It will also make sure you don't have texture and it doesn't dry in a weird way. Next I'm going in with the La Neige Water Sleeping Mask. You may find that strange because obviously it's supposed to be a sleeping mask as the name suggests. However, there are no rules to say that it should be used for night only. And this is a quick fix for your skin, quick plumper for a special wedding day makeup. The great thing about this, it's water based and it feels like a light gel, so it won't be heavy for your wedding day makeup. On that note, I wanted to say that even though I have dry skin and for dry skin, I'd always recommend something quite thick, quite balmy as a skin prep. For your wedding day, I wouldn't recommend it, especially if you are getting married in a hot climate, just because you will get oily, you will get shiny, and shiny translates when there are photographs and especially when there's flash photography. If you've got oily skin, you're absolutely fine. All you will need to do is make sure you use a lot of oil-free formulas and just make sure you set the makeup properly with powder. If you've got dry skin, it's a little bit more tricky. You'll just have to make sure you're layering your skincare like I am now. And the next step, which is adding a much more hydrating skincare product to the areas where you know you're particularly dry or you get more texture on your skin. So this is the Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream, so famous. So as you can see, I'm just concentrating on the dry areas. Just anywhere where you know you get texture. You might not have texture like immediately, but you know you'll get texture when you apply that foundation. And just really rub it in well. Next, make sure you definitely prep your lips. I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Lip Oil. So this one's a nice plumping one. Just let it do its work and then later on, when we get onto the makeup section, we'll deal with it. So as you can see, my face is quite glowy at the moment, even though I've used primarily uh, oil-free products. I'm going to go in with the Bobbi Brown Instant Confidence Stick. This is great for adding a little bit of mattification and priming and also minimizing pores. So although I've got drier skin and people with drier skin tend to have minimal pores, I still have a bit of pore issue around my nose, like the typical T-zone area. So I'm just going to go in and just add. I'm just gonna go into my T-zone as well. What you'll notice is it instantly just takes away shine it, it's a great blurring primer. Takes away shine without adding any texture. You can apply it before makeup, after makeup, it's very versatile. Next I'm going in with the Shantikai Just Skin Tinted Moisturiser. This is in the colour Nude and I apply it just using my fingers. I find this product works best with fingers and it helps to just really work it into the skin. I will put a list of all the products I'm using down below so that you're not confused with names, etc. This I just like to use as an all over base. And this has SPF 15, which really is very, very basic SPF. Really, if you're going to a hot country or you've got very sensitive skin or very pale skin, I would suggest at least SPF 50. So just to apologise about the light in advance, the sun is beginning to set. So in case you see weird shadows and weird lighting, that's the reason why. If you need more coverage, you can either go in with a foundation stick, a bit like the Burberry Fresh Glow Stick. So you can either go in and dab, especially around my nose area, I know I need more coverage. Alternatively, a quicker solution is to go in with a powder foundation that gives you some coverage. So I'm going in with the Shumura. I think this is like the light bulb compact foundation. I could be wrong, but like I said, I'll include all the list of products down below. This just gives you instant coverage and mattification. So areas where you know you need a bit more help. 
So you can go in with a smaller brush to spot conceal. I should have really gone in with the under eye concealer the step before the powder but it doesn't really matter because I haven't set my face with the setting powder just yet. So I'm going in with the Glossier Stretch Concealer. Under eyes are important just to give you that brightened eye effect. If you've got Asian eyes like me, don't go too close to the underneath of the eye as it will close up your eye and make your eyes look smaller. So now we want to set the face. I'm going in with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. It's a very finely milled powder. Normally I would go in with a some kind of powder brush, say like this, something quite fluffy. However, because I do want the makeup to last, I'm going to press in the powder. Pressing, the pressing technique just helps to really keep the product on for much much longer and really set everything in place so almost do like a rolling motion i love this sponge by beauty blender as it's got like a pointy bit which is great for under the eyes and around the nose area also i find this pressing action just helps to keep a much more smoother finish People who like their glow are probably thinking, where's all the glow gone? But don't worry, we'll be adding all of that back. As you can see, that's given a very flawless face. Right now it's very flat, it's very one dimensional, but we will be adding dimension, color, everything into that. Next, I'm going in with the Bobbi Brown Bronzing Powder in Golden Light. This is just to get a little bit of warmth back into the skin, because right now it's very one dimensional. Like I said, it's very flat. So again, you can do that three or that E. Never do the all over, just because having that lightness in the center of the face always gives a lip, a lip from within glow and it's more youthful looking. So already you can see with one side done, the difference between this side and this side. Bear in mind that for your wedding day, if you're wearing a low cut dress or something that's sleeveless, off the shoulder, sweetheart neckline, it's quite a good idea to apply some powder on your chest area as well but I would always suggest doing it after your dress is on and even then applying some cloth tissue or something to protect your dress as you don't want your dress to be stained with some bronzer. So as you can see that's just warmed up the complexion really nicely however the bronzer's job is to warm up your complexion Contouring is completely different. Contour is to sculpt your face and give you some definition. I'm going in with the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder. This is the perfect powder for contouring and adding that dimension. So I like to do halfway across my cheekbone. And when you blend, blend upwards so they're not dragging the powder down. And don't be afraid to take it into your temple, into your hairline. Feel free to do the fish face. Again, I'll list all the brushes as well down below. Don't forget triple chin here. And hopefully you'll see that my face is a little bit more sculpted now. Next, we're going in with some color, finally. So I'm going in with a Tarte Amazonian blush, which is supposed to last for 12 hours. So it's ideal for your wedding day. Smile when you pop on your blusher. Smiling whilst applying your blusher just helps to ensure that the color's on the highest point of your face. And always build up, never go in with too much as you will end up looking like Krusty the Clown. Now I've come across so many women who've said to me, oh, I'm not really a blush person I don't like blush um but blush can make the biggest difference to your face and I think it's key in bridal makeup whatever level of blush you're comfortable with add more because in photographs it can be really drowned out you can think you have blush on and then a photograph is taken and you're like was I even wearing blush and if you're not wearing blush you tend to look sick 
blush just helps to give you a little bit more vibrancy youthfulness healthy look glowing look whatever all the good words so just add a little bit more blush than you would normally be comfortable with even now i'm quite i'm wearing quite a bit of blush but on camera i can see that it looks very soft so that's what i mean you have to go in with a lot more blush than you normally would so i'm going to show you two different types of glow i'm going to show you the understated glow and the kuching glow so with the understated glow i achieved this using the hourglass ambient lighting palette so this is the one which has the trio of highlighters and i literally swish my brush this is from it cosmetics and again i smile and then i go like this and i swish it or swash it whatever you prefer swish or swash and i take it into the temple as well and a little bit on my forehead so look at this side and look at this side so you know earlier when we were talking about having no glow and that we would add it back this is how you do it but without that wet texture this is what ensures that you still have that glowy bridal look but at the same time you're ensuring that it will last all day so again swish swash really you can add it wherever you want i'd like to add a little bit on my forehead as well and I, look how glowy your skin looks now for some of you, that may be enough, you're like, that's enough highlighter, Deborah. Not for me. So this is where I come in with the Kuching highlighter. If you've been following my videos, you will already know that I'm in love with the Burberry Fresh Glow Highlighter. So this one is in rose gold. It's a beautiful colour, very suitable for bridal makeup. And with this one, I would aim it just literally on the highest points of your cheekbones. So just there. A little bit on the center of the nose and a little bit on the cupid's bow i would always say with the highlighter just do a little bit for now and then we can always go in and finish off with it again as you can see this is the skin and it's looking gorgeous it still looks natural we've put on quite a lot of products but the thin layering of products has really helped to a make it look natural b it will help with the longevity and see you get this finish so next we're moving on to eyes really eyes again you want to keep it simple classy um, you can either just do a liner like a really defined liner and even that can make such an impact on your eyes alternatively if you want to add some color I would say stick to neutral shades so like gray tones um, bronzy tones brown tones etc or even um, more sh shimmery champagne tones, for example, that can also look really pretty. I'm going in with a soft smoke. At, I would never go in with a smoky eye. I mean, you can never say never, but I would say if you're going to go in with a smoky look, go in for a soft smoke. So I'm going in with the Decorte Glossy Eye Color. It's like a creamy, shimmery eye color. You can go in with your finger or with a brush. Let me try with my finger first. I've used this product before and I like the fact that it just really blends out really easily. And again, start off with a little bit and you can always build up on the smokiness depending on your comfort, what you like. Don't forget to add a little bit to the bottom of your lashes as well, just to give some balance. Sorry guys, I have to use the screen, otherwise I don't know what I'm doing and then I could end up looking like a panda. This is a long wearing formula and I know that from trying it from before. If you're just going to apply normal shadow, 100% apply eye primer underneath, it is necessary. It will help and prevent it from um, creasing and smudging etc all the things you do not want with your eye wedding makeup so primer eye primer is extremely important however if you've got a product that claims to be long wearing you've tried it a few times you know that it won't smudge then definitely you don't need primer with it 
So next you want to do an eyeliner and use an eyeliner that will last you all day. You need a long wearing eyeliner. You don't want to deal with smudged eyeliner because that is your worst enemy. So I'm going in with the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Gel Eyeliner. This is a firm favourite amongst many brides and wedding guests. It's in the colour Caviar Ink, which is sort of like a dark, dark brown. Could be mistaken for black, but it's not as intense as black. So I've just lined the eyes. I'm going to do a flick, but I just wanted to show you this part first. Um, I have had a lot of requests to do like a more detailed eye look and I will definitely do that but it will be a separate video just because I feel like with Asian eyes there's a lot to go through so that's a video in itself so I promise you I will do it uh, a separate eye look whether that's a day look a smoky look a sexy night look whatever you want but for now I just wanted to quickly line the eyes so I've just done it like this and now I'll be adding a flick. So the key rule with a flick is following the bottom line, marking, following the bottom line, marking, and then joining it up. I will go into more detail in, in the eye video, but just to give you an idea. So I've just done a subtle flick there to really emphasize the eyes. I always think like a little cat flick always complements every single eye shape. Um, obviously you can do a lot more of a dramatic uh, eyeliner than this but I've just kept it simple perhaps don't do an Amy Winehouse eyeliner unless it's a themed wedding or you're you know dedicating it to a special decade now before I apply um, mascara and false lashes I'm just going to go in with a glitter or a sparkle should I say so this is Etude House Air Mousse it's a Korean brand and it's just got this gorgeous sort of like coppery glitter or sparkle, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can either just apply a little bit on the center of your eyes to give it that spotlight effect. Alternatively, this is a great way to take it from a, a day bridal look to an evening look. So um, this is so easy to use. You can literally use it with your finger. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend using a brush with it. And you'll instantly take it from a day to a night look. And this sort of glitter, with the artificial lights and especially if you're having a little bit of a boogie it really reflects and bounces off the light and makes your eyes twinkle like a dancing queen so be quite generous with it and i'm just going to apply it all over so with the natural light it's very subtle but it's more obvious with a, an evening light, if that makes sense. So that's the eyes. One thing actually I wanted to quickly touch upon is tight lining. So tight lining is the line underneath the top of your lashes in your waterline. A lot of women, if you haven't done this before, they get very freaked out by it, but there's nothing to be scared of. You just need to get a little bit of product on your brush, not too much, and literally follow the baseline and what this will do is literally close up any gaps and just make the eyes more defined and pop a little bit more and just in case you're wondering it's safe for contact lenses wearer because i am one too moving on nicely onto the lashes i'm using the surat eyelash colors these are probably one of the best on the market and literally just go in and I want to say pump it, but that sounds like the wrong word. Pump it a few times. Press the curler a few times. It looks scary, but I promise you I can't feel a thing. And this will just help to give your lashes that much needed like lift and curl. Then I'm going to go in with the Beauty Pie Uber Volume Mascara. This has got fibre in it, so it will just add some length. I'm trying to do it on camera so you can see, but it's so hard to navigate. <laughs> and what I like to do is apply it to one side of the eye first and then do the other eye before moving on to the actual mascara. Then I'm going to go in with the Beauty Pie again Flash False Lash Mascara. Um, 
and just go over the white bits. And don't be afraid to really go into the root of the lashes. You need to in order for that extra lift. So I've just done the top lashes. And this is great because you can really like go several times without making it look clumpy. So I've just done the bottom lashes as well. If you are a crier, please, please, please invest in a waterproof mascara and just use it almost like a final coat and top up on top of this. So it would be in this case, the third layer just because you want everything to be locked in. And even if you shed a tear or two, it's not going to impact your eye mascara or your eye makeup too much. I'm just gonna pop a little bit of the same coppery shimmer on the inner corners of my eyes, just to open it up and brighten my eye a little bit. I've done this in a few of my videos. And again, just a little bit underneath, but in the center. So I'm going to do the eyelashes last. Normally I would do it now, but I kind of want to move on with the video and do the lips first. So I'm going in with the Moisture Lock Wonder Gel Beauty Pie Lip Liner. And you have to make sure that it's sharp because you want that definition, especially if you want to draw the outline of your lips. Let me not forget to just take off the excess product off my lips because I don't want too much of a slippery texture. So just dab it with a tissue. Now, if you really want your lip product to stay on, you can do several techniques. You can either go in all over with the lip pencil. The only thing I would say about that, as much as it will definitely mattify your lips even more, whatever shade you put underneath, it will change the tone of your lip color. So just be mindful of that. And then with another technique, you can just softly powder your lips. But if you're somebody that suffers from dry lips, then I wouldn't recommend it as it will bring up texture. So that's why I always put on some balm tap off the excess and then just gently line the lips. If you don't want your lipstick colour to be too affected, just try and find as close a match of lip colour and lip pencil as much as you can. Next I'm going in with the Shimura lipstick. Again, I don't remember the name off the top of my head but I will pop it down below. So this colour, I just want it to be soft so I'm going to just dab it on gently. And again, to keep the longevity of the lipstick, you can tap off, reapply, tap off, reapply. But it's completely up to you. Alternatively, like I said in the beginning of the video, just keep it with you in your handbag or get your like bridesmaid or maid of honour to hold it. That is their job after all. Right guys, so we're almost done. We've only got brows, uh, lashes, and then a top of highlight to finish off. So next, I'm going to go in to do my brows. I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. This is a fan favourite, everyone knows it, super famous. So as you can see with my brows, I have quite thin brows here, it gets thick again and then thin again. So I like to thicken this bit so that it's almost like the same width as here. So this is where I use my pencil to just give it, help it with that thickness. So I'll show you what I mean. So I've just used the pencil, as you can see, just to draw underneath and give it a little bit more definition. It's better to give definition underneath than on top because giving the definition on top is what will give you that scouse brow look, which is what you don't want. So just do it underneath and the same on the other side. If it's an everyday I, and I just want to rush, I would use this one pencil just to finish off everything. Boom, done. However, this is not just an ordinary day. Then I'm going to go in with the Burberry Full Brows. This is like a liquid liner, as you can see, like a felt tip. And this I use to create the hair stroke. So at the front of my brows, I like to give a little bit more definition. Again, I'm sorry, I'm just going to have to go here and do it because I can't see. And always draw in the direction of the hair growth. So as you can see, I've done one brow. Then I just use the other side of the Burberry Full Brows, which is like a powdery formula to just fill in the gaps. As you can see, it's a bit fairer or lighter in the center. Don't do it everywhere, just where you feel like you need that help. Then I'll go back in with the Brow Wiz. On the other end, there's a spoolie and just brush out the product so that it's all evenly there and not too blocky. And last but not least for the brows, I use the Boy Brow by Glossier in clear and I just 
brush it up and brush it into place this will keep it in place all day long and I, what I love about this is still keeps movement in the brows without that crispy hardened texture next we're on to the tricky bit of false lashes um, this is a bit that you could struggle with so if you're not comfortable putting on false lashes don't use the morning of your wedding to practice because that is not the time so I would definitely say give it a practice almost like even if you have to wear falsies every single day of the week leading up to your wedding day because you want to be confident applying the lashes or just get a friend that you trust who's really good at it to apply it for you I use the duo lash adhesive in and it comes in clear and this is the dark tone so it's a little bit darker the blue color is like this apply it on the back of your hand wait for it to or wherever you prefer wait for it to dry and become a little bit tacky like sticky you don't want to apply it straight away when it's wet because then your lashes will just fall off and it just helps to use tweezers as well just to get that grip if you can't wait for the glue to dry and you're impatient like I am, then just blow on it a little bit and it helps to quicken up the process. I'm using the Ardell individual lashes in short just because I've got oriental or Asian eyes. So the me even the medium ones are a bit too long and I don't want it to look fake. So I'm keeping it classy and therefore I want it to look full but natural. So it's completely up to you, you can do a full spectrum of lashes. I like to keep it on the outer edges to give more of like that almond shape and emphasize that. And you're literally placing it in from the top, but unfortunately you have to do it in this mirror because it's quite tricky to navigate otherwise. Using a black tone um, adhesive just helps because sometimes if you use a white one and you've already done your dark liner, it can make it look a bit grey, ashy, whatever, like you've got bits of glue stuck on your uh, eye, which is not what you want. If you do do that and that's your only alternative, then that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you've got, you know, maybe even a black or the same colour eyeliner as you used originally and go in with like a liquid liner and just fill in the gaps if that makes sense and colour over it so that it doesn't look like you've got bits of glue stuck on your eye. So after assessing the final look and you're happy with it, just go in and add just a little bit more powder. Like I said, you will need to carry your setting powder with you. This is the area I tend to get more oily. It helps to know your face and where you tend to get oily, dry, etc. You'll notice I won't ever put it around my mouth because I don't need help in that area. A little bit of your T-zone like so but like i said you can always top up if you need to then go back in with your highlighter if that's your thing and you love highlighter like i do you can assess your highlight your glow maybe just add a bit more alternatively you can top up for the evening so leave it as it is for now and then top up for your evening party and feel like beyonce under the disco lights like that just back onto the lips, I would just say try to use um, more of a matte or not a super glossy finish lipstick just because they will wear off so quickly. And yes, you can top up, but you don't want to spend your whole night topping up your lipstick. Secondly, make sure that you don't get it on your teeth. A nice technique to ensure that you don't get lipstick on the teeth, which is very unattractive, is to wrap some tissue around your finger and just do the stamp. I call it the O stamp. And that will ensure that the lipstick gets on the tissue, but not on your teeth. And lastly, stay the hell away from gloss. Just because, again, gloss wears off really, really quickly. Secondly, if you have your hair down or the wind blows, anything can happen, especially if you're getting married in the UK. Then what you don't want is that really unattractive, like, hair sticking onto your lips, making it look like you've got a mini moustache. And then before you know it, you're, like, wiping your hair away and then the gloss is going on your face nobody's got time for that so stay away from gloss anyway so this is the final look it's a very natural look in terms of your bridal look you want to look like the best version of yourself don't worry about bringing pictures of kim kardashian taylor swift nobody cares you want to look like the best version of yourself and that's the most beautiful that you can be so finally guys just wanted to show you the final look with some flowers 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe.